Good morning. It's Friday, December 29th, the last trading day of the year. Um, and we're 0.13, I think, percent away from an all-time S&P high. Um, they're, they're, they're close to it. Uh, I, this article that I'm going to include in the newsletter from um, uh, Seeking Alpha, NASDAQ S&P Dow experienced limited moves on the second to last trading day yesterday. Today's going to be the same. The, the one quote that I want to point out to you is this. Um, one day before the last trading day of 2023, it seems market participants have gone home to prepare for New Year's Eve. The biggest takeaway on the day seems to be that the bond yields rose a bit, the dollar strengthened, and energy prices softened. Uh, I do not expect tomorrow to be any different as the NASDAQ 100 is about to close its best year since 1999. And you remember what happened in 2000. Uh, investors aren't going to take a major risk or change any major positions. The books are pretty much closed. That's what you can expect today. So I won't go over kind of, hey, what can you do today for today? But let's look into 2024. Um, 13 of 14 times after hitting the all-time highs, the markets were up 15% in the next year on average. So hitting new highs is super, super bullish. Here's QQQ. Let's take a look at a long term of QQQ because we are hitting those all time highs that we hit back here in November 2021. You can see we're, we're kind of moving past it. Every time we've hit all time highs, we've continued higher. So it, it doesn't mean that you get out of the market when you hit all time highs on the indices. It's not something that you necessarily worry about. In particular stocks, you can kind of try and trim. In indices like QQQ, VOO, it's a time to reflect on, do I trim some or do I just put more money to work? If you're dollar cost averaging, you put more money to work. Uh, what I'm gonna include in the paid newsletter this weekend, and for anybody that doesn't know, the link is down below in the video. It's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Daily Stock Pick. And to get the newsletter, it's the fourth one down here, the Daily Stock Pick uh, newsletter. I do a newsletter every day that the market is open for free. Uh, the paid newsletter is the weekend newsletter. And the weekend newsletter includes some uh, content that is educational, is more personal from my standpoint as to what I bought and sold. Uh, it, it is a, a significant um, kind of reach for me because I'm not used to doing that stuff. And the number one rule of this podcast, if you're listening for the first time, is do not trust a douche on the internet. I am that douche on the internet. Uh, I am not telling you to follow my trades. People have found this incredibly helpful uh, to develop their own strategy. I include my setup on TrendSpider um, that you can use, part one and part two. I'll probably include a part three. Um, but again, the paid newsletter, you can get so much content from the free one. There's no reason not to subscribe. I am raising the price probably next year, uh, well, probably Monday. Um, to $100, $120, I haven't decided. But $80 for the year just seems like a deal to me. So if you're interested, sign up <clears throat> today or over the weekend. You, you, know, you Put your uh, email in there. I do include a free seven-day trial. But this is the free one. And, and you can see I provide a ton of stuff. It includes all of the, the show notes, all of the podcast notes, stuff like that. But what I'm going to do in tomorrow's paid newsletter is my predictions for 2024 and some stocks that I really like in 2024. Um, it, it'll be a little bit less of a strategy session and more of a, um, if you guys are boomers like me, the Karnak version, Johnny Carson Karnak. Uh, so that's what it's going to be like. Uh, just so you're aware... Seeking Alpha, uh, the tool that I use right here on, uh, if you go over here to the second link, it says save $50, but you're actually saving more. There's a 30% off premium sale right now. Uh, it goes on until the end of the year and, and that gets you all of the analysis. It gets you all the quant stocks. I will talk about this, uh, top, uh, stock and, and this top one that I found last night, just scrolling through the premium version, GCT, Giga Cloud Technology. You can see the quant rating is 4.99. 
Here's what you don't get this with the premium mem membership, but you do get to look at these top quant stocks. This one's an additional $199. I don't particularly care. Um, they have it for join $99 right now. But the one that I do like it, the, the feature is the seeking alpha premium. And it's, you get that when you click on that link, it's for $169. You don't get these top rated stocks. You don't get to follow this. Um, it's just more of a, a, an analysis tool and it allows you to analyze stocks, analyze your portfolio. You get your portfolio imported into Seeking Alpha, but if you're thinking about Seeking Alpha, that 169, I've been affiliate now for what, four months with them. Um, it has only come around on Black Friday and they extended it because of the success of the sale. So if you're interested in Seeking Alpha and you're interested in saving, go to Linktree, click on that second link. Uh, I do think it's a great, great tool, the Seeking Alpha tool. Uh, I, If I wasn't an affiliate, I would absolutely buy it. That's how much I like it. Uh, let's talk about some news that I found on Seeking Alpha. Um, this one is, oh, why is it doing this? Uh, Kathy Wood's ARC Fund, uh, they exited GBTC and they bought into BITO. So uh, QQQ, we saw this long-term kind of chart up here. GBTC, just so everyone is aware and full disclosure, um, here it is in the four-hour algo, <clears throat> and GBTC on the algo is up 80%. That was its first run. This is 85% on its second run. It's kind of getting that button hook. I probably would would stay a little bit out of this, but we, I will talk about a little bit about um, uh, what we're seeing with some of the... Um, the Bitcoin ETF stuff, but GBTC, Kathy Wood selling out of this is no small thing. She had a tremendous position in this. Uh, getting out of it, she did say there was a quote in here um, that's interesting. Um, uh, Arcs Generation uh, for next, uh, Kathy Woods. I thought I saw a quote in here. I, I was doing a little bit of research, so maybe I saw it in another one. Oh. Uh, Arc Nash sold GBTC shares out of an abundance of caution, Wood said in an interview on Bloomberg Television. We still, uh, we're still as optimistic about Bitcoin as we ever have been, she added. So they're, they're just changing things. And remember, GBTC is the one that brought the lawsuit against the SEC to be able to change from a spot um, ETF to an actual real-time ticker symbol tracking Bitcoin. And there's differences in that. But GBTC, to be full disclosure, I sold out of this in December of, of this year. And since I sold out, it is up 320%. I got sick of the fees. I got sick of the expense. Maybe Kathy's kind of the same thing. Um, this has just been on a tremendous run. Do I expect it to get back to 60? I don't know. I mean, BITO, if she's buying into BITO, she knows something that I don't. She is one, you know, this is one smart lady. I mean, whatever you think about her performance, she is incredibly, incredibly intelligent. But this is the ProShares Bitcoin ETF. I, listen, it's not up as much as uh, GBTC. GBTC has been the, the kingpin. Um, and you look at this one from a weekly perspective. If we just go back here to December, of this year let's see that's 2023 january if we go back to the low here where i sold out of gbtc which is about this point and we just go up to this point this one's only up 98 percent. so different calculations different volumes different kind of things you might want to think about following kathy woods if you're interested in getting into this bitcoin stuff um, so there's an idea for you if you want to get into the bitcoin stuff uh bito BITO. I, I like that one. I, you know, I don't know the difference. If you want to do a, a just a difference of, you know, hey, what what is BITO? Go over here to uh, Seeking Alpha. You can type it in, and you can see, you know, the momentum A plus expenses. So if you go over here to the expense uh, uh, portion of BITO, you can see 0.95. That's that's really expensive. Dividends A plus. Let's see. Um, do they pay a dividend? Uh, yeah, they do. Fourteen point nine percent. That's kind of nice. Risk F um, from their ETF. Liquidity A plus. This might be a really good. In fact, I may buy into this one. Um, let's look at it on the four hour. Let's run the algorithm on this because I know we had a recent buy on this one. Um, yeah. 
Ooh, fourteen dollars. We're at twenty. I mean that that could po pose pretty well for this one. I like this one. I'm gonna put this in my trend spider list um, of not owned. Yeah, I like that one. Not owned. Should I put it in? Eh. I and if by the way, if you're new to this, this is Trend Spider. This is my algorithm in Trend Spider four hour algorithm. You can get it when you sign up for Trend Spider. Just use Link Tree and use that top link right there. It's on sale. Um, but going back to Seeking Alpha, uh, I was looking at um, these top rated uh, ETF. Uh, top rated. I basically went down here and I went to top stocks. And it will rate the, the top quantum stocks. And this one, GCT, kind of jumped out at me as maybe an opportunity. Specifically, I was looking at this chart and I was saying, mm, September 8th, um, it was selling up here at 16. You're kind of running into that. You're selling at about 18 right now, kind of getting a little bit of a pullback. Um, but it, it's interesting because it's a buy from Seeking Alpha Analysts, and they're all super, super high. The quant gives it even its valuation is just a B. So if we go over here and we type in um, GTC and we look at it on the, oh, come on, uh, GCT. I'm sorry, uh, GCT, type in GCT. Here on the four hour, we can look at it. Uh, and the interesting thing about this in TrendSpider, and again, these two tools kind of work together. My four hour algorithm in GCT makes you 243% versus buying and holding 16 months ago when it was first IPO'd, it loses you 7%. So the current run of this one, you bought in here at nine, you're up at 17. The current run since the end of them, kind of end of November, 91%. Um, That's over 36 days. This is how the quant tries to help you it is it tells you this and then when you use um uh, trend spider on the, the the back end of using uh, seeking alpha you can find some really good stocks it's run a little bit if we go over here and we use another tool that i use which is uh finviz and we type in gct we can see uh, it is making money the pe is not crazy it's 10.12 the forward pe is seven the average target price is 19 and you're trading at 18 so it is running up there it is up 216 percent year to date uh the two price targets are from october 2022 and june 2023 so you can read articles why giga te uh, technology stocks is soaring higher this week um, you can look there's no insider selling but all of these tools kind of lead you to lead me to believe maybe this is one I want to look at. Look, 39 cents per share, 45 per cents per share, 59 cents per share. The RSI is a little high. Not totally worried about it. The MACD is a little bit high on, on that uh, thing. I'd like to see it come down a little bit, but you do have confirmation. You're in the middle of a run. You just had a golden cross here. Um, if we look at a weekly on this one, and we look at the long term, it's not that old that it, it doesn't even have a 200 day. But you can see here on the IPO, um, the period was uh, during this week, August 15th, it was 151%. It opened at 19. It closed at 48. It got all the way up to 60. This is an $18 stock right now that on its IPO was at 60. It was overvalued. But look at those PEs. They're, they're not crazy. I'd read up a little bit about more about this, but I wanted to show you guys how I use Seeking Alpha, how I use TrendSpider, and how I use uh, Finviz, and all of the tools that I use, because I will be putting out kind of a tools video, I think, at some point in time when I get lazy and get off my ass a little bit. Um, but I like that. And, and this was a perfect example of how I use these tools um, to look at everything that I have in my portfolio, um, everything that I have uh, that, that's coming up, all of that kind of stuff. So GCT, I may be buying that one. As, well, to, again, two, two stocks right off the bat here. So BITO and uh, GCT. Great, great observations if you're looking to make some money. Again, let's start 2024 off right. Social requests, if you didn't know, you can uh, log into Spotify. If you listen on Spotify, just down below, you can type in whatever the hell you want. Um, but you can ask me to look at a stock if you'd like. 
if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you can't really type in, but you can use uh, any of the social networks. So I've got a private Facebook group. I've got Twitter. I've got Instagram. You can just ask me to look at anything. So we've got quite a few of the, um, the, the social requests right now. Um, Alex from Spotify, can you please look at Refi, R-E-F-I, bought some as a long-term play with its huge dividends. Have an awesome new year. Thank you so much for your podcast. Let's look at Refi. What the hell is Refi? Chicago Atlantic Real Estate Trust. You guys know how I feel about REITs. You use REITs for income. You don't use REITs for long-term investments because typically, um, now, now I'm, I'm just saying this and again, douche on the internet right here douche on the internet. Um, but it's got $291 million market cap. So it's semi small, not super small, but billions of dollars. It's only got 17 million shares outstanding might be a little bit hard to, to fill if you're trying to fill it on a sell quickly because of a downturn, like you can see here. Um, but it's got a 12% dividend. It's got a PE of seven, not crazy forward PE of six real estate, anything real estate right now, you're probably reducing rates, you're going back up. So if we take a look at this, the algorithm had you in at 14.29. Um, you've gotten the X dividend. That drop that you're seeing is that 12% dividend taken out. That's just the X dividend taken out. And we can look at, uh, like we said, Costco. Uh, the dividend was taken out. You're play, trading at 661. I think it went right back up, but we'll take a look at that after this. But here's the REIT. You're up 21% on this one. Then you got your dividend. So now instead of being up 21%, if you bought in the algorithm, you're up 13%, but you got your nice dividend. You got your 4% dividend. My expectation is because this is on a run, because you just had the golden cross, you're probably good. Your RSI, people sold. People and people, what, what will happen is the dividend is taken out. People will start to see it sell. They will panic sell or they will start to you know buy it just because oh my god it's high the rsi the the macd is a little bit up there you can see when it was up here back here in june of this year you just kind of went into a little bit of slide i don't think there's anything in here that kind of causes me to uh to say okay let's look at it over here say hey you shouldn't invest in this i think the stock from a standpoint of we can chart it against the s p um, one year it's up 5%, year to date you're up um, 8%, five years um, it is, uh, it doesn't even have a five year. So it's a little bit newer it looks like, but year to date, I mean one year you're up 5%. The S&P is up 26%, so you would have been better off buying VOO. Uh, year to date, the S&P is up 25%. So I, again, real estate got unnecessarily hit this year. So I don't think it's a long-term play, Alex, but if you're looking for just to get some cash and to redeploy that cash, probably not a bad idea. Uh, Dex from Spotify wants me to look at Riot. Uh, this goes right along with the the next one. I, I will look at this one. But Riot, uh, yeah, I mean, this is Mara. I bought Mara. It's the same thing. Mara's got a little bit more uh, crypto, kind of not exclusivity, but they, Mara is the big boy. Riot's the small boy. So it's up 68% right now in this run. Like I said, January 10th, I think anything that's running into this uh, Bitcoin ETF, I think you're going to see complete like hype mo mode. Um, you know, does it get back to 55? No. Does it get to 30? It might. You're just over the 200 day. You've got con uh, confirmation over that 200 day. Your MACD is just crossing up. Yeah, your RSI is run, but that's because you're up so much. It's not a horrible one. Um, when you take a look at Riot over here in in Finviz, they're not, they're not making money. Just like GBTC and all, or I'm sorry, uh, Mara is not making money. Um, this one has 206 million shares outstanding uh, year to date. It's up 419%. Uh, the average target price is 1860. You're trading at 1780 right now. Um, I, I don't think it's crazy to think that, you know, Hey, you could buy this. There's some insider selling at 15. There's some insider selling at 19. This is just one of those that you're kind of betting on, uh, between this and Mara. If we go over here to riot, we can look at the, um, uh, some of the the seeking alpha stores, seeking analysts strong buy, Wall Street strong uh, strong buy, Quant is a hold, and it's probably just because of their their run. 
But uh, let's select symbols and let's get rid of the S&P because we don't care about the S&P. But let's look at Mara. Let's look at GBTC. Uh, I mean, let's just look at these three and let's look at the one year. Mara's up 793%. So either that one has to pull back or these other two have to come back up. Mara is just one that, you know, and we'll go over this one in a little bit, but Mara is one that just defies all logic right now. Year to date, Mara is is going crazy. Three year, um, you can see Mara's up 129%. GBTC is up 14%. Riot's up 12%. So Mara is the king daddy. I, I don't think it's a bad idea to get into Riot. Just understand, you know, you, you will deal with some extreme volatility on here. Um, the four hour algorithm, so you know, on Riot makes you 2.5%. Now, if you held this for 24 months, if you bought and held, you're down 24%. So the algorithm protects you on this one. Doesn't necessarily make you a killing. It protects you. Um, oh, by the way, Bisco from Spotify said, the land of the lizards, which was the name of the other guy or person who asked about a stock a couple of days ago, land of the lizards name is a fish song. So, hey, kudos Edibles are my go-to. Uh, I'm not a fish guy, but I completely, completely respect the music, complete uh, respect the community that they put together. Uh, Bisco also says, I appreciate the pot. Now, Melissa in the Facebook group asked, is it too late to get into Mara? We just looked at Riot, at, at Riot and I don't think it's too late because I do think that you've had this run. Now, I, two days ago, I bought Mara at 26. And I said, uh, I'm YOLOing this. I think I bought about 100 shares. I think I spent 2600 bucks on it. It wasn't a big position. I YOLOed it. I said, hey, we just had this golden cross at 15. I've missed out on this run. I don't think that I've missed out on this one completely. I think it goes higher because I think the hype rally is real. Now, you had this gap here between 27 and about 20, 27.86. And it came back down and it's filling it. My expectation is it continues. I said I was looking at for, uh, buying at 26 and selling at 30. I can't sell this year for tax reasons uh, because I bought it in my brokerage account. Uh, I plan to either add more or sell and take a profit when it hits 30. My guess is I'll just add more if it hits 30 before um, uh, before January 10th. Uh, I don't think it's too late to get into this one. Just realize your top is probably 40 to 50. It's probably going to settle into this range right here. I said at 30, this is where you saw the last kind of look right here. This line right here puts you in um, right about there. That line right there is about 31. So I, I expect some resistance at 31. The Bollinger Bands are just opening up. Your MACD is crossing up on the oscillator. The RSI is at 82. Understand, two weeks ago, this was trading at like $9. And I said to everybody, hey, under 10, you should get in. If you're playing crypto, you should get in. My algorithm on, on Mara makes you 63%. So rather on Riot making you 2%, this makes you 63%. Uh, if you bought and held, you had 31 positions over 24 months. You wound up losing uh, in my algorithm. But if you just bought and held, you lose 15%. So I don't think it's too late. It is extended. It is expensive. Look at the price to sales of Mara of a uh, Riot at 13. The price to sales of Mara is almost double at 24. But everybody's trading Mara. And this one has 222 million shares outstanding. They're losing money. Uh, it's got a $6.2 billion market cap. The average target price is 13. And it, I, I repeat, it's trading at, 20, at $29 right now in pre-market. So understand this is not one that you buy and hold and you forget about with a large position. If you're putting positions in this, if you're playing some type of... Uh, 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 you know, options, futures options, or anything in this one, this will move a, a very long way. But Melissa, understand, number one rule, I am a douche on the internet. I don't think it's too late to get into this one. There might be better options out there. Um, this article right here, uh, oh, come on. 
We're going to go ma- marathon digital stock on track to break 11 session rally. And it did break. It went down yesterday. That's not a horrible thing. I, I think that extends the rally. Uh, from December 11th until the close of December 27th, the stock more than doubled. That is 16 freaking days. So this is at one of those runs. Other Bitcoin miners have also made dramatic gains during this day, but they also took at least one breather in the process. For example, HUT surged at 105% since December 11th's close, but the stock lost ground on the 11th, 12th, and 19th sessions. Mara is the only one that hasn't. So while, while I think this one's a good one to get into, we can take a look at HUT. Uh, HUT, the, the, you can see right here, look at those red candles. H, the algorithm got you in HUT at $10.29. Right now, this one's only up 54%. So you, you just understand there are plenty of names out there. Another one that you might want to look at, and another one that's a little more solid, Coinbase. This one has just been a monster. I'm going to get rid of these. Um, let's see. Remove this segment. We're going to remove this segment. And we're going to say, okay, the algorithm gets you in to Coinbase uh, here at 71, 77. And Coinbase is probably one of those stocks that you want to be Kathy Woods and you want to buy it. But over 58 days, the algorithm so far is up 144% and you still have confirmation. It is crazy. This 93%, throw that out to trash. Understand this uh, uh, MACD is overextended. The the RSI is at 75. Is it too late to get in? If we look at a weekly on on uh, on Coinbase, you're still 141 per, 149%. Uh, let's see what it is today because it's at less than 149. You're 102% from your all-time high. And that was back in November 2021. So you don't have a 200-day because the stock is still rather new. Here's your 50-day. It's moving positive. Everything's moving positive. The RSI is at 83. Understand the MACD is up where it hasn't been before. Coinbase is going to uh, broke. They're going to hold all the Bitcoin for all the ETFs. Uh, Kathy Woods has a ton, a ton of Coinbase. So if you don't want to get into these crypto ones, Get into, I would suggest ARKW. I like ARKW a little bit better for this than ARKK. But ARKW, this one has been a monster too since the end of November. You're up uh, 50%. But ARKW, if you look at the long term, you still have opportunity to get back to that 200 day. You haven't even touched the 200 day, which is 889. So you're, you're 50 days moving positive. You have confirmation. Just understand everything's extended. So I don't want you to back up the Brinks truck and load everything in there. You'd be crazy to do that. Um, but I do like all of crypto until January 10th. And then January 10th, and I don't know how it trades between now and then, but I do think that that Bitcoin ETF, one of two things will happen. Either everybody realizes that we're fully extended in the Bitcoin rally and they just jump out and you're stuck holding a bag or trying to get rid of it uh, if you bought in too high uh, or it continues its rally. And maybe on January 15th, we start to pull back or January 30th, we start to pull back. So it's a little bit of a questionable play. I like it. You know, I, I bought into it. I am not buying. Uh, I am not buying a ton more, but I probably will start to put in a couple of thousand dollars each day uh, from this point forward. Um, Dex from Spotify asked me about Disney. So here's the deal with Disney. Um, I I like it here at ninety, but it's expensive. It is still expensive, and, and and the thing you have to understand about Disney, I still hold it, and I think I hold it with an average price of about ninety five or so. So I'm still in the red, and it's in a retirement fund. But it's smaller positions. I think it's one thousand, two thousand, and three thousand dollars. It's not a large position, but I'm trying to start that position and add to it over time. The PE is seventy. The forward PE is seventeen. These guys have a business in ESPN, and their costs are still huge. So your costs are going up for all of the sports stuff that they're doing, for all of the streaming stuff that they're doing, and for buying Hulu. The cost for the parks are going up because of uh, increased wages, because of increased costs, just inflation, blah, blah, blah. So all of their costs are going up. Meanwhile, 
their revenue is actually coming down. And the reason the revenue is coming down is you can think of your uh, cable bundle at you know 100 bucks a month, seven, seven, your TV service, say 70 bucks a month. Well, $50 of that was probably going to Disney for sports and shit like that. Um, yeah, th they were making a tremendous amount of money. And as the cable bundle gets windled down and customers pay less and less, Disney's actually making less. And, and uh, Charter this summer, uh, they took ESPN off the basic tier. And they had a fight with ESPN over the actual dollar amount that they were paying. Well, Charter won. And Disney had to take less. So they're all, as these contracts come up, they're going to start taking less. And then they're going to launch a consumer ESPN business. Today, the consumer business is pretty crappy, to be honest with you. You get like lacrosse games. So if you're into lacrosse, if you're into cricket, if you're into other kind of international sports, it's pretty good. If you're into high school sports, it shows stuff like that. Um, but for, for the majority of Americans, they don't want an ESPN uh, thing. So you're taking... 300 million Americans who used to get ESPN as part of their, their basic cable bundle who had to pay for it to people who will just choose to pay for it. And so that revenue comes down. In my mind, I just don't think this is a huge turnaround story back to a $400 stock or a $120 stock. This is a long-term one. Do I think it's a buy? We can go and look at it in the algorithm. The algorithm right now got you out with a 2.67% loss. You can see this one had you an 11% gain. That was solid buying down here in the 80s. Now, I am not selling out of my $95 position. The Bollinger Bands are sinking. They're, they're kind of expanding. You can see they cinched up. When Bollinger Bands cinch up like that, they're going to expand. And they're going to either expand on the way up or the way down. You take your moving averages and you look for confirmation. The confirmation is that Disney's moving down. And you're 50 days moving down, you're nine days moving down, you're 21 days moving down. I think this was just, hey, year end, we're going to pump this price up because some of the brokerage houses probably bought into Disney and needed to pump that one up. So they probably put a ton of money into play, got it pumped up. It will come back down here to either the 200 day or that $80 level, which seems to be providing some support. Um, Scott in uh, Facebook, he sent me a message. So Tom Lee said in a recent interview that he expects S&P to drop during the first six months of 2024. His projection is 4,300. What do you think? Um, so to, in order to look at the S&P, I'll look at SPY because the SPY is just, you know, if he's expecting it to go down to 4,300, Tom Lee has been more right than wrong. That would put SPY uh, down here to 40, let's see, 430. And if we go down to 430, you can see that would be a 10% correction. That's not a crazy uh, assumption that we'd get a 10% pullback after this, what, 15, 20%, 13% rally. It's not crazy to think about because when you look at the long term, um, you know we're, we're going to continue higher. Uh, he ex what he expects is the roller coaster of next year to actually happen. And he expects this 479.88, um, 98 to be uh, kind of a tipping point where you kind of pull back. And he expects that double top to happen. And then you pull back down to 430, which is way down here, which you can see if we put in just 430. Um, uh, let me get out of here. Oh, stop. I don't want that. Um, we're going to hit escape and we're going to do this line. So we're going to go to 430 and put in that line here. This is a weekly chart of SPY. So you know we're going to go down to 430. That's right about here. Uh, got it. Uh, and you can see that line right there, uh, 430. I mean, do we get that pullback from to, to that point? Looks like that was the pullback where you started the downward trend. Kind of provided some resistance on this candle. Um, kind of provided support on this candle. So you can see, I don't think 430 is out of the the realm of possibility. The MACD continues up. Uh, it can continue. It can roll over, and that strike line would continue up, and then you'd have the cross up. The RSI right now is at 69. So I think it's possible. Tom Lee has been more right than wrong. Uh, I don't play the market in, in that. Um, he, he expects the first half to be soft, but he has also said he expects the second half to be just a rocket ship. Now, Tom, again, I point out Tom Lee has been more right than wrong. 
But these guys typically need to do and, and say things like that in order to get press coverage. So my uh, my assumption is Tom Lee is playing this fairly conservatively because if we only pull back, in my mind, um, we probably get to 450, I would think would be a, a relatively safe pullback. And if we get there, load up the Brinks truck because I think you could buy your way down through here and dollar cost your average way. But I, I think that's what I would play, Scott. I don't think I'd play and, and pull my stuff out of the market because who's to say that Tom Lee's not wrong? I mean, again, he's been he's been wrong other times. He's not right all the time. So I, I think you play it. I think you look at the charts. I think you continue to to monitor your portfolio and, and you adjust your 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 um, stuff that way. Um, TM, can you please do an episode on Shopify? I think it may be a good long term stop. TM. You have not been listening to me for very long because I've been going over Shopify um, pretty much on a, what, weekly basis. I've said way back here when it was trading at 50, I said we're looking at an $80 stock by the end of the year. We're at 79.61. And the reason I said 80 was there was a nice little gap up here. Uh, if we pull this back, I think it may be on the weekly. Um, but if we pull this back, let's see, let's go to the weekly. Um, because we can look at the all time stuff here. Yeah. Uh, oh, I said it would, no, it wasn't even a gap. It was the freaking 200 day sitting there now at 82 in an upward trend. Um, the 50 days now moving up. So I said at 50, you should feel very comfortable buying this one. But the reason people didn't feel comfortable buying it is because of the PE. They're losing money. Their forward PE is 76. It is incredibly expensive. I don't think it's a bad buy. I think here at 80, you've got your all-time highs back here at 160. That was November 2021 uh, where we hit the highs. But you're, you're going to see some resistance here at 80. If you're going to buy it long-term, just buy it here. Just buy it here. I, I, I have a five-figure position in this one. That is a long-term. I bought some, I think, at this realm uh, back here at 80. I've been holding on to it ever since. It slid down. I bought more. I bought more down here. I believe in this company. Remember what they did a few months ago? I think it might have been six months ago. Was what they did, they were losing money. So they got rid of their fulfillment for their small to medium businesses. They sent that over to Amazon. Amazon's now got the cost center, whereas Shopify has the revenue and margin. So they're going to start making money again. You can see they were making 22 cents and 8 cents. And then they started losing money. And as they got rid of that fulfillment center, they started making money again. They will make money. This is a great long-term stock. So I would suggest if you want to go back and, uh, you know, history and listen to my episodes, I've been saying this whole ride down, you should be buying um, Shopify once it gains confirmation. When did it gain confirmation? Right here at 30 <clears throat> on the weekly. In October, the October lows of last year, <clears throat> it gained, I'm sorry, hold on, excuse me. Mm. <clears throat> it gained confirmation. <clears throat> confirmation can be used uh, uh, very well. Hold on one second. <coughs> you boy still got a little bit of a cold. So I like Shopify. I hold it long term. Let's talk about scans. And if you don't know what scans are, scans are I go into a uh, trend spider and I do a market scan based on my algorithm. And I look at uh, several things, the watch list that I provide. I provide the core investments. I've got 50, uh, 36 names that I have. I, I scan my own brokerage. I scan covered call ETFs, the list that I provide you. Energy names I, the, that, that we trade. I scan that. I scan levered ETFs, low cost Vanguard. You get all of those lists uh, in, included when you sign up for TrendSpider. If you just go over to Linktree, click on this. And then you email me. Once you sign up for TrendSpider, we can go in, we can look at the pricing of TrendSpider. You want the elite level. You want the middle level here. It is $397. It's good for two more days. So until the end of the year, you can get it for under $400. So you use the link tree. You sign up for TrendSpider. And then you come back here and you email me. Email me from the email address that you signed up for TrendSpider with. I will email you back, and I've got a few people from the past few days um, to email back. I will email you a letter that includes a, a welcome letter that includes a, a links to all of these lists so you can import them. But when I scan, I scan these lists. I scan my own personal list that I don't share. 
And then I scan the Dow, NASDAQ, and the S&P. And there are a few that, that come up here. Coke. We had this nice 7% gain. It got you out, got you right back in at 58.65. I said this is $60 stock. If you want to get in and just hold it until 60 and then sell it at 60, you're fine. Not a great thing, but this is a great long-term play. Um, who's in this one? Warren Buffett's big in Coke. SEO and not the cocaine stuff. SEO, I've said, hey, wait for confirmation. Oil, there's just too much supply. And SEO is a, a ultra short. It's a three times leverage short on oil. $20.35. If we go over here and we look at oil, um, oil is up 0.91%. It's trading at 72. I don't know that I'd buy heavy in, heavily into SEO, but you could probably trade this on the 65 minute algorithm, which by the way, trades on the eight day EMA. Uh, and the 65 minute algorithm said buy at 19 and you're up at 20. Not a bad, not a bad play on that one. Um, but I'd probably trade, trade that one. But on my four hour algorithm, SEO does get a cross up here. Um, we can look at uh, TSLS. This is the short of Tesla, TSLS. And if it, the algorithm got you in at 1845. So if, if you're thinking that Tesla is going to go down with all of the news coverage, people ha just be careful. Uh, I was in TSLQ. TSLQ is one also that is a short of, uh, you can you know go and look at which one you want to do. But TSLQ got you in at 2733. You're at 2739. These are decaying assets. You want to trade them. You don't want to own them. Uh, PSQ also is a levered ETF. This is the pro uh, uh, to short of uh, QQQ. We talked about QQQ. You want to wait for this to have confirmation. Now, this gets you in at $9.44. Um, if you want to short, I would suggest SQQQ, which is the ultra pro. Uh, this one got you in at 1366, 1336, you're at 1327. I said, wait for confirmation. You still don't have confirmation. On this one, you're just kind of hovering around this $13 mark. The MACD is very low. The RSI, it is oversold. So uh, it, buyers will need to show up. They're at 30 right now. Uh, this could be an opportunity, but I say don't buy these unless you have confirmation. When you have confirmation, you can see 1918 right here got you out with a 0.5% gain, but you got all the way up to 23. It's a nice 20% gain. So PSQ is one that got up. Now, one sector that's been beaten up that has a cross up right now is XLU. This is utilities. Got you out with a 1.14% gain. If you're just looking for entries into this, 6343. If we look at a long term of, of utilities, you can see it's trading in this range. And I put this, this uh, thing up here. This is a 35% range. You just did have the death cross. So you don't really have confirmation. If you're into utilities, this is one. Again, utilities are used mainly for income, kind of like REITs. So um, with bond rates higher, they, they just haven't performed really well. Win, um, this is one that has been beaten up, just got back to its 200-day. 84.02, you're seeing a cross-up high up here on the MACD. Um, the RSI is at 63. If you want to get in, it's got confirmation. This is just another. You can see the Bollinger Band cinching up. When the MACD crosses up, this could mean that you're going up to a second leg up here to 95, 96, but when crossed up. I had one that crossed up and I wanted to bring up. Uh, this is in my personal buy list. It's, it's Best Buy. I, I've always been a fan of Best Buy. Um, I, recently, I just didn't like them. I liked just ordering on Amazon and it made it easy and the Best Buy stores were kind of bad and the app was horrible and the pickup was just you know really crappy, the service. I had a fantastic buying experience using the app uh, and download and uh, buying two new iPhones from my parents. Um, the fulfillment process, the actual order process, the, uh, the, the communication process, everything. I ordered Christmas Eve. The store was closed. It was like eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. I ordered Christmas Eve. Uh, they were closed Christmas day, but at 8 30 AM, I got an email that my order was ready. I rushed out of the house. I did the podcast the day after Christmas. Uh, I rushed out of the house. I get over there. It alerted me on my phone. Your orders are inside. When I got inside, they knew I was there. They had the phones at the counter. It was a five-minute pickup. It was absolutely fantastic. 
I am a big, big fan of this one now. It's just getting back uh, to it. It's got another cross up. So when when I talk about my algorithm and cross ups, you can see the buy here was 65. Um, going into Christmas, we had next dividend date, took some money out. Uh, it continued down. It's continuing back up. The Bollinger Bands are cinching up. You have confirmation. So my guess is that this gets a little bit higher. If we want to take a, take a long term of this one, it's trading at 78. You're not even at the 200 day. So if that 50 day is going to actually turn around and start moving positive with the 9 and the 21, you probably have 91 in this stock and you're trading at 78. Um, it's not a crazy thing to think that this one could do actually well. The PE is not nuts. It's 13. The dividend is 4.65. You're down 1.77. I actually liked the store experience. It's one to think about. Uh, oh, which is Realty. We talked about uh, the REIT from uh, Alex who asked about, which one was it? Uh, Refi. Uh, this one is one of the largest realty income. Um, you had the golden cross and we had another cross up. So it, it got a nice cross up. There's a couple more that I will include in the newsletter. If you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, market's now open. Have a great, again, my paid newsletter tomorrow is going to be some predictions. Uh, if you want to sign up, uh, I, I, completely appreciate everybody that pays for the newsletter. Um, I hope I provide you content. Uh, I know I started it six months ago um, and, and everybody that, that has paid for it has enjoyed it. I haven't gotten one negative feedback yet. So um, I, I really, really like it. Um, I like doing it. it. It helps me keep on track. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, if you're a paid member and you want to suggest, hey, I'd like you to write about this, Tell me what you want me to write about. Um, the biggest thing that you can do is, is I, I think the tools that, that, that I actually think you should get and start off your 2024 with. The first one's TrendSpider, and it, that's making sure that you have a large enough portfolio to trade in uh, be, to justify the $400. The second one is Seeking Alpha. I think that those two complement each other well. Uh, and I think the third one would be um, the paid newsletter. Because I think both when I use those tools and you're using those tools, you can find a system that actually uh, you know benefits you. We've had plenty of people write to me over the past two, couple of months as we started looking at the end of the year that they were beating QQQ, that they were beating the indices, that they were doing really well. And this was the first year that they were actually doing that. So I, I think there's opportunities with using these tools that you could actually, you know, trade your way into a pretty good 2024. And if we are fluctuating, like Tom Lee says we will, if we fluctuate that much, like Tom Lee says, this algorithm will help get you out of positions that you don't want to be in. Look at this, Apple, you're out with a 12.95% gain. That, you know, if you just wanted to trade Apple, uh, this algorithm makes you 32% Versus buying and holding over 24 months, it makes you 8%. Now, Jason's got an even better uh, algorithm for Apple. I don't think I have it saved, actually. Um, I don't think I do. No, I guess I don't have it saved. Um, but uh, Jason, had, I did a, a strategy session with Jason from TrendSpider. And he's got a great algorithm that just blows away everything. Um, but you know, again, my algorithm would protect you in that, that fluctuation. Uh, if you listen to it and that's the thing is, remember, this is just charts, take some motions out of, out of the trade. You still have emotions because you have to hit the buy and sell button. But I think those three tools, um, the trend spider, uh, the, the seeking alpha and my paid newsletter. The other thing you can do start 2024 off with a thousand dollars in Weeble like I did. My thousand dollars in Weeble is now let's see, thirty seven forty. So um, I was hoping to be at four thousand by the end of the year. I'm not. That's without trading options. I probably will use that money to trade options um, in the new year. So okay. If you have any questions, hit me up. Have a great New Year's. Uh, again, if you guys want to hit me up on any of the socials, I'm back in Atlanta, so I should be available. Anybody that I didn't get to, I will get to. Okay, thanks. See you, Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my ears. Guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily. Don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter. Let us help you grow. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the
Fears.